Hey guys, welcome back to Sax Tuition on YouTube. My name's Jeremy. I've had a lot of questions over the years about what gear I use to record my saxophone to make these videos and how I get it to sound, hopefully, pretty good. Now, I'm sure it won't come as a surprise to you to know that you don't need access to a fancy recording studio to record your sax. I record these videos in a regular old room in my house. Yep. That was my laundry flapping in the breeze. So in today's video, I'm gonna lay out a few different options and budgets for you, whether you wanna become the next YouTube saxophone superstar or just make some nice high quality recordings that you can share with your family and friends. And to show you the kind of results you can get from home, I've made my own pop sax video covering the legendary song Against All Odds by Phil Collins. You'll see a bit more of that video later on, but if you want to watch the entire thing, click this link up here. Now before we get into it, all this nice recording equipment is not much help if you're still struggling with getting a nice tone on the sax and learning all the notes, which is why you should check out the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. It's a complete course for learning the saxophone from scratch. Lesson one is available on YouTube and I've put a link to it in the description down below. Or you can head straight to saxtuition.com to get the whole thing for yourself. Also guys, did you know most people watching Sax Tuition are not subscribed? It's really convenient and it's one of the best ways to support the channel if you enjoy the content I make. So let's get into it. Let's start by looking at microphones. Now there are two main types of microphones, dynamic mics and condenser mics. Dynamic mics are very directional, meaning they pick up what's directly in front of it and not much else. That's perfect for a lot of live applications when you're playing on stage in a band and you wanna pick up your instrument and not much of what's happening around you. A condenser mic on the other hand is generally much more sensitive and picks up a wider spread of sounds. When you're at home or in a studio, you're only miking your saxophone and there's no other noise distractions around, a condenser microphone will generally always get you the best results. Now, in all of the previous videos I've made, I've used the Shure Beta 98 HC. This is a clip-on condenser microphone and it's a really popular mic for saxophone players. Being a clip-on microphone, once it's clipped onto your bell, you don't have to think about microphone placement. You can move around a little bit and know that its relative position won't change. So that's a big plus. However, despite what I was just telling you about dynamic mics versus condenser mics, this is one of the few condenser mics out there that are actually specifically designed for live settings. And in a studio, to be honest, it's probably not the best mic to record with. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still a great mic and you can get some fantastic results. If you like the sound of any of the previous videos I've made, you'll know what's possible. But if you went to a professional studio and insisted upon using this microphone, you'd probably get a lot of strange looks from the engineer. A better microphone to use would be a studio condenser microphone like this, the Stella X2. The capsule in this mic is based on the capsule used in the legendary Neumann U87. For those of you who aren't microphone nerds, I'm certainly not, that U87 is a $3,000 microphone. This mic is 200 bucks. You'll be able to hear it in action a little later on in this video. Now, unfortunately, you'll need more than just a nice microphone to record your sax at home. Microphones like the two that I've just shown you need to connect to an audio interface before they connect to your computer. The interface that I use and would quite happily recommend to anyone running a basic home studio is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. For under $200, this little unit is really easy to use. It has great sound quality and has two separate mic inputs, giving you some flexibility if you one day wanna use two mics to record a duet. On the other hand, if you're sure you'll only ever need the use of one mic, you can pick up the Scarlett Solo for about $60 less, which in my opinion is a fantastic bargain. My favorite feature of these Scarlett interfaces is when you're setting the gain on your microphone, 
for those uninitiated, that's basically just the volume, it has a super handy ring that appears around the gain knob. If it's too low, it won't light up. If it's too high, it'll go red or flashing red if it's peaking. And you can probably guess if it's just right, it'll go a nice solid green. That saves a lot of fiddling around and a couple of potential disasters. This interface connects to your computer via a USB cable and can also be used to connect up your headphones and if you have them, your studio monitors. A quick side note, all condenser microphones require a thing called 48 volt phantom power. Make sure that the audio interface you're purchasing has this feature and press the phantom power button once your microphone is connected. Otherwise, your condenser mic simply won't be able to function. Now, when it comes to listening back to your recordings and doing any sort of serious mixing or audio editing, it's important that you're getting an accurate representation of the sound that you're recording. For headphones, I like the Sony MDR7506s. These headphones are a mainstay at just about every professional recording studio I've ever been to. And for studio monitor speakers, I use a pair of JBL LSR305s. Don't forget too, you'll need a microphone cable, a mic stand, and a pair of TRS cables to connect your entire setup. As an optional extra, you might want a pair of stands for your studio monitors so you can raise them up to ear level. Okay, okay, hold the phone. Doing a quick tally of this Amazon shopping cart, we're at just under 900 US dollars for this entire setup. Now, don't get me wrong, you're getting a lot of great gear for your money here. But let's talk through a couple of cheaper options that will still get you great results. For starters, Focusrite do a great bundle of audio gear that includes the Scarlett Solo interface, a condenser mic, a mic cable, mic stand, and a pair of their own studio headphones for 260 US dollars. The only piece of gear you're really missing in this setup is the studio monitor speakers, but for most home recording setups, your studio headphones will do just fine. If the idea of cables and interfaces is making your head spin, or you're really limited on space, there is another option. It's possible to get a USB condenser microphone that connects directly to your computer and doesn't require a microphone cable or the use of an interface. Now, if you're going down this route, I would resist the urge to buy a really cheap USB microphone as the ones you can get for like $50 are probably not gonna sound great on your sax. Rode, on the other hand, are a fantastic brand and they make a microphone called the NT-USB, which by all accounts is a great mic for the money. Now, unfortunately, I don't own one to test it for you in this video, but there are a couple of videos I'll link to in the description to give you some examples of this microphone in use. So with the gear portion of this video out of the way, Let's talk about the best way to record yourself at home. First things first, we need to actually consider the room that we're in. The room plays a big part in the quality of the recording we can get. Now, professional studios spend a great deal of time and money treating the recording space they're in with acoustic panels to give the space warmth and clarity and eliminate even the slightest reverberations that could be detrimental to the tone of the room. We're obviously not going to do that, but there is one surefire thing we can do to get a better result from our recordings, and that is just to simply deaden the room. Basically, we can use pillows, clothes, blankets, couch cushions, whatever you have, and move it into your room until you can clap your hands together and not hear the reverberations off the walls. This is something I used to do all the time when I recorded in my old studio. Now, I know it looks like a mess, but check it out. Now, a lot of the pop saxophone recordings you would have heard use a lot of reverb on the sax, but that actually doesn't come from the room, that comes from the recording software. And I'll show you how to use that in just a moment. Let's talk briefly about microphone placement. The best area to place your microphone is between your bell 
and your left hand keys. Don't place your microphone down into your bell, but make sure you maintain that close distance to your microphone. Now, when it comes to recording software, otherwise known as a DAW, I like to use Logic Pro X. It's a professional recording program that Apple makes. However, you don't need fancy software either. Regardless of whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you can download a free program called Audacity that has many of the core features of other more expensive programs. Now, if you're gonna cover a pop song on saxophone, you'll want to download a karaoke backing track. The easiest way to do this, I think, is just to purchase a track off the iTunes store for a couple of dollars. You'll be able to download the track and then drag it into Audacity or your door of choice so that you can record over the top of it. Make sure to create a new mono track for your saxophone, double check you've got your audio input selected to your interface or if you're using one, your USB mic and you should be ready to go. Put your headphones on, get your sax ready and hit the record button at the top of the screen. Now, before this recording is ready for prime time, we're gonna do two things just to make it sound super epic. Firstly, I'm gonna select all of the audio on my sax track, head up to the menu here, click on effect, then click on normalize. Leave all these settings as their defaults, then click on okay. This is basically just gonna even out the volume of our recording and make sure it's in a good range to blend with our backing track. After you've done that, if you want to change the volume of your sax track, you can do so by dragging this gain slider here. Next, while keeping our recording selected, let's click on Effect, and then this time we're going to click on Reverb. Now you can play around with these settings until your heart's content, but if we're going to record a big sax line on a pop tune, particularly anything from the 80s, we want really generous, sultry reverb. So you can copy my settings exactly from what's displayed on screen for this sort of effect. Notice I haven't actually EQ'd my sax track at all. And that all comes down to two things. Firstly, I'm using a good mic, which is this Stella X2. And the second reason is because I've just done a whole heap of long tone practice. Even the best gear in the world won't help you much if you haven't learned to control your embouchure. Now this channel is full of tips to help you do just that. So if you haven't already, click subscribe. Once you're happy with everything, all that's left to do is to export your audio by going to File, Export, and select either WAV for maximum quality or MP3 for a more manageable file size. So let's have a listen. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Now the track you heard today was actually courtesy of TomPlay. TomPlay is a service that just keeps going from strength to strength. They've got a massive library of songs for saxophone. They've even got multiple versions of the same song. So you can pick a version at your difficulty level. If you like the microphone I used in today's video, that's the TZ Audio Products Stella X2. There's an Amazon link to that mic also in the description below and a discount code for 10% off. Finally guys, if you're looking for a course that will teach you every note on the saxophone, how to get a great tone, how to read sheet music, and how to play beautiful melodies just like the one you heard, check out the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. It's got three hours worth of lesson videos, over 200 demo tracks, and a 68-page ebook that will help you conquer the saxophone 
from scratch. You can watch lesson one on YouTube, that'll be on the end screen of this video, or head on over to saxtuition.com to get the whole thing for yourself. As always, I'd love to hear from you, so leave your comments and questions for me down below. Hit like on this video if you enjoyed this sax recording tutorial, and of course, I'll see you all again soon.